Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a black-white sacrifice deck featuring Blood Artist, a 2-mana 0-1 vampire introduced in Jumpstart, saying whenever Blood Artist or another creature dies, including the opponent's creatures, target player loses one life and we gain one life. We're also playing the full playset of Cruel Celebrant, a 2-mana 1-2 vampire, saying whenever Cruel Celebrant or another creature or planeswalker we control dies, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. So the major difference here is that Blood Artist also looks at the opponent's creatures dying, unlike Cruel Celebrant. So we've got a total of 8 of these 2-mana vampires that will drain the opponent whenever a creature ends up in the graveyard. And then one of the other reasons to play the white version of the Sacrifice deck, unlike the more popular black-red version, is that we get to play with all these 1-drops like Garrison Cat and Hunted Witness that leave behind a 1-1 token when they die, providing ample Sacrifice fodder for our various Sacrifice synergies. Now, there's a lot of ways you can build a Sacrifice deck, even within Black-White, and I'll try to mention some cards that you could include, but I ended up settling on a version using Bolas the Citadel as its powerful late game, a 6-mana legendary artifact, saying we can look at the top card of our library at any time, and we can play lands and cast spells from the top of our library, and if we cast a spell this way, instead of paying the mana cost, we have to pay life equal to its converted mana cost. So with all the life gain from Blood Artist and Cruel Celebrant, we can easily offset the life loss from Bolas the Citadel. And then Bolas the Citadel combines quite nicely with our Woe Strider. This is our Sacrifice Engine, a 3 mana 3 to Horror, that when it enters the battlefield is joined by an 0-1 white goat creature token. And then we can sacrifice another creature at any time in order to scry one. So that gives us a lot of control over the top of our library, which combines nicely with our Bolas the Citadel. So if we ever get Bolas the Citadel in play alongside Woe Strider and have a bit of sacrifice fodder, we can usually just end the game on the spot by eventually finding some copies of Blood Artist and Cruel Celebrant, we can find more of these random one drops like Garrison Cat and Hunted Witness that we can keep sacrificing with the Woe Strider to make sure we keep hitting spells of the top instead of being stuck with a bunch of lands. And then while we sacrifice to the Woe Strider, our opponent's going to be losing a bunch of life and eventually they'll end up dead. So that's the powerful endgame that this deck has available. And we can also escape Woe Strider from the graveyard at the cost of 5 mana and by exiling 4 other cards. And then it enters the battlefield with 2 additional plus 1 plus 1 counters. So that also gives us a bit of additional late game. So that's the basic idea of our deck. Now let's take a look at some of the other card choices. At 1 mana, besides Garrison Cat and Hunted Witness, we also have the full play set of Gutter Bones, a 1 mana 2 1 Skeleton Warrior that enters the battlefield tapped. And for 1 and a black, we can return it from the graveyard to our hand if our opponent lost life this turn. So nice recursive one drop that can apply a bit of early pressure and also combos quite nicely with Priest of Forgotten Gods, a staple of all these sacrifice decks. A 2 mana 1 2 Human Cleric, we can tap it and sacrifice 2 other creatures and then the opponent has to sacrifice a creature, loses 2 life, we get to draw a card and add 2 black mana to our mana pool so the Priest can enable the life loss to get back gutter bones and also pays for the ability. But Priest also potentially lets us play a Bolas the Citadel as early as turn 4 by adding that 2 black mana. So with an ideal draw, our deck is capable of winning on turn 4. If we play any random 1-drop, turn 2 play Priest, turn 3 play Woe Strider, and then turn 4 we can sacrifice the Goat and the 1-drop to the Priest, and then with the 2 additional mana we can play Bolas the Citadel. We already have a Woe Strider in play to manipulate the top of our deck, so we just eventually need to scry into more creatures and eventually find a Blood Artist or Cruel Celebrant to win the game. Now you could also be playing the Cat plus Oven combo, which recently got banned in Standard and a lot of Historic Sacrifice decks still play it, but I ended up cutting it to make room for some additional cards, including Lures of the Dream Den, typically played as a companion, but we're just playing it for 3 mana in this deck, as a 3 mana 3-2 Legendary Cat Nightmare with a lifelink, and during each of our turns we can cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost 2 or less from our graveyard, and there's no shortage of powerful 2 and 1 mana spells we can get back from the graveyard, so Lurus can provide a lot of value over the course of the game. Of course, if we're playing Lurus, it's tempting to also include Archfiend's Vessel, which can then turn into a 5-5 demon if we get it back from the graveyard. 
Although if we're gonna play Archfiend's Vessel, we probably want to be playing Call of the Death Dweller as well. And then once we add all those, there's not a ton of room left. So that's also potentially a different approach for building these sacrifice decks. And then of course we've got our full place of the Woe Strider, which we can't really get away from in any sacrifice deck, especially if we're playing Bolas of Citadel as our end game. And then we could also be playing Bastion of Remembrance at 3 mana as another drain effect to complement Blood Artist and Cruel Celebrant. And then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Solma Simulacrum, a 4 mana 2-2 that when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for a basic land to put on the battlefield tapped, so it can help us ramp towards Bolas the Citadel a turn sooner. And then when the Simulacrum dies we also get to draw a card, so we don't mind sacrificing it. Another card we can consider at 4 mana is Luminous Broodmoth, which can turn our creatures into flying creatures when they die, so we can sacrifice them once again. And then we've got our three copies of Bolas the Citadel, which can often end the game on the spot. And then going over the mana base, we've got 7 planes and 7 swamps alongside our 4 godless shrines. So we've got 11 untapped white sources and black sources. We've got 4 isolated chapel. And then 2 copies of Phyrexian Tower, which can also help us ramp by sacrificing a creature and adding double black to our mana pool. But it is legendary, so we don't want to play too many. And 1 copy of Castle Lochthwain, which can be an additional draw engine in the late game. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's a little bit underwhelming. This is better. And then probably get rid of the Cruel Celebrants. Blood Artist combo is a bit better with Priest since we can also just cast it with the two black mana that the Priest generates. And finding a 1-drop is great. Facing a turn 1 Swamp. And a Mire Triton. So some sort of a graveyard deck. The plan is to play Priest here. Take two. And the Timurit calls the dead, mills over Demonic Embrace, which they can play out of the graveyard. Alright, Hunted Witness, a nice draw. So first off I can attack with Gutter Bones. Play Witness. And then I think I'll play Blood Artists, use Priests. Sacrificing Witness and Gutter Bones, and then we can use the two mana from Priest to get back Gutter Bones if we don't draw anything else. Our opponent gets their first zombie token. And another Timurit calls it dead. And there we see some of the payoffs. Archfiend's Vessel, which they can maybe get back with Lurus or Call of the Death Dweller. And the Silver Smote Ghoul, if they can gain 3 life in a turn. Alright, well, I'm happy enough just activating Priest a bunch more. What's the ideal sequencing? Maybe play Lurus. Getting back Hunted Witness. Sacrifice, Hunted Witness, and a token. And then I can play Double Gutter Bones. Opponent already down to 8. And next turn the Strider can probably just burn them out. They do gain a bit of life back. So they gained two. If they can gain one more, they can get back Silver Smote Ghouls from the graveyard. There's currently one ghoul in the graveyard. They might look at Call of the Death Dweller getting back Mire Triton and Vessel. That would also gain two life to get back Ghoul. And there we see it. 
So your opponent gets a 5-5 five, five flyer and a 3-1. Three, three, so not too bad. Back up to 12, so we might not quite be able to close out the game unless we draw another Artist or Celebrant. And they even milled over another ghoul with the Mire Triton here. Alright, so... I guess... I think I want to play the Strider to try and scry before... drawing with a Priest here. So I'll sack the Goat and see if we can find something useful. Lure's not quite... Sack of gutter bones. Another strider can bottom. Alright, celebrant I'll take. And then replay hunted witness. Activate priest. I guess I don't have the white mana to play Celebrant, but I guess my opponent's just dead to the Strider here. Doesn't matter. I've got exactly three creatures left to sacrifice, and the Blood Artist also counts himself. Alright, so a nice game showcasing the power of Priest alongside Blood Artist, letting us burn out the opponent without needing to attack too much. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand is missing a Sacrifice Engine, whether it's a Priest or a Strider. No Citadel to work towards, so I think this is a Mulligan. Alright, this is much better. This is pretty close to the ideal hand, if we can hit our land drops. So I'll keep the uh, Priest plus Strider. Wouldn't be able to play Hunted Witness turn 1 unless we drew an untapped White Source. Facing Branchwalker with Field of the Dead. Bolas' Citadel, definitely an important card for beating Field of the Dead. And a Crucible of Worlds, alright. But I'm gonna try and get some value out of the graveyard. Might as well attack. And a Dryad of Legion Grove to play some additional lands. Alright, so now I can play Strider, or rather I guess I play Hunted Witness and then use a Priest to play the Strider afterwards. And next turn we'll be able to play Citadel with a Strider in play, which is going to be pretty fun. Rada to play more lands off the top. Fable Passage, also nice combo with Crucible. So what is our opponent ramping towards? That's what we're still trying to figure out. I guess Rana's activated ability, pretty good. Although we can just chum block. And I guess eventually they want to make some zombies with Field of the Dead. Although with double field and double forest in play, that's a little awkward.
All right, time to play Citadel. And now we just need to find artists or celebrants. Hunted Witness is great, Garrison Cat is great. So that's essentially like drawing two cards for each one of them. And there's artists, so now we can actually start dealing damage. Now the one drawback of Blood Artist is that it targets a player, so you have to click on the opponent every time. And then double Celebrants should speed things up. So now we're dealing 4 damage for each creature that dies. As well as gaining 4 life, so we can keep playing stuff off the top, like this here lures. And our opponent sees what's happening and concedes. Well, that was a good showing of Citadel plus Ghost Rider. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a great opening hand. Just missing the ball as a Citadel now. Turn one Soul Warden. All right, so this is going to be a bit of a challenge in terms of having enough damage to kill them. So that's where the Citadel is definitely going to be important. Pride mate, we can shun block pretty efficiently. Another hawk, so they've got plenty of stuff to sacrifice to the priest. Do I shun block already? I think I'll take six. The pride mate's gonna get bigger so we can maybe prevent more damage later. I could technically play Solemn Simulacrum here and then still activate Priests and then play Artist with the two mana. Is that what I want to be doing? It doesn't sound horrible. So Phyrexian Tower. I should maybe attack with the Garrison Cat first. I don't think they'll be blocking necessarily. So tower makes two mana sacking cats. Leaves behind a token. Play Simulacrum. Now I could also wait with activating priest, but then I won't be using the two mana. Although the question is, how big is this Pride Mate going to get? And am I going to be forced to chump with a Blood Artist, which I don't really want to do? Maybe it is correct to just pass. I'll still be able to play Citadel next turn if I draw the Citadel, since we have the Phyrexian Tower to make mana. Speaker of the Heavens. And our opponent's empty-handed. I also briefly considered playing Kaya's Wrath in this deck as a way to handle creature decks like this. But sometimes you can still beat them by going off with a Citadel. And of course Wrath has a couple matchups where it's not that useful. So, question here is do I activate Priest? I think I do. Alright, no Citadel just yet. So there's a Speaker of the Heavens to worry about, but yeah, my goal should just be to find Citadel. If I don't find it next turn, I'm probably dead. In the meantime, Lurus can get back a Garrison Cat, or I can use the Wastrider to start scrying, 
Let's see if I go Lurus into Garrison Cats. And then activate Priest Sacking Lurus. And play Strider. And then we can use Strider to chum block Pride Mates and uh, Scry towards Citadel, hopefully. Heliots uncrowned. Yep. Speaker makes an angel. Now, I could also upkeep Sacrifice with a Strider, but I can always draw an extra card with a Priest, so I think I'm okay untapping. So, no Citadel just yet. So, let's see. If I play Gutter Bones plus Blood Artists, 4, 5, 6, I'll still have the mana to play Citadel afterwards. So I think the plan here is I pretty much have to draw Citadel here. So I activate Priest and then with a draw trigger on the stack I sag the Priest to the Strider to keep the Artist in play to gain me life once we're going off with the Citadel. Although I suppose I'll need to sack a creature for Phyrexian Tower to make mana. So I guess I'll have to end up sacking the artist anyway. But this will gain me more life, I guess. So a lot of triggers. And there's a citadel, alright. So, in order to play citadel, I will have to sack a creature. And I think uh, sacking artist makes sense. I've got 9 life, I guess 10 life to work with here. But I bricked off right away. Eh, that's too bad. If we could uh, string together some creatures over the top, we would have had a chance. But now I'm just dead on board. GG's. It's possible I messed up the sequencing in these last two turns and I could have left myself with uh, maybe an additional creature in play to sacrifice, since we had a lot of options. But, uh, oh well, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Allures of the Dream Den deck. So probably the Mono White Auras deck. In which case I do aggressively want to mulligan towards Priest of Forgotten Gods. This hand's also just kind of weak in general. Still a pretty weak hand. Alright, there's a Priest, so I'll keep. And then... Probably get rid of... A Blood Artist and a Lance. So let's see if our opponents is on the Core Spirit Dancer deck. Yeah, they might be on the blue-white version. Mm, 
And yeah, opponent concedes, they can beat an active priest. So this is a good illustration of using the opponent's companion to your advantage. On to the next one. We're on the play with uh, decent looking hands. Facing Yurion Sky Nomad. Could be a more controlling deck or a Field of the Dead deck. Field of the Dead I don't really mind playing against with this. Since we can usually ignore the zombies by just burning them out. A control deck that can repeatedly wipe the board could be an issue though. And it looks like our opponent's maybe on an Esper control variant. So Priest is not going to be at its best. Burgle Rats. I'll discard Celebrants. Play Strider. And then probably just activate priests. And then I can decide between getting back gutter bones or playing artists. I'll get back gutter bones. Frostlings, alright, that was unexpected. I guess her opponent's really going deep on those Enter the Battlefield abilities on creatures. Does step down a priest, so relatively effective here. And a quasi duplicate to copy the Frostlings. Taps down the other priests. We're just trying to find a citadel at some points. Don't think I want to trade my Strider for the Lynx just yet. Even though we're close to escaping Strider, we'll need a couple more cards in Graveyard. It's gonna be duplicate jump started, discarding Risen Reefs, so our opponent's missing green mana, presumably. So it's an Elementals deck with uh, Yarok, that's what the black is for. Another Artist. I guess I can uh, play Artists, attack with the Gutter Bones. And then just sacrifice it if they don't trade. And get it back. Opponent does trade. It's gonna be four Blood Artist triggers, putting the opponent to seven. So are they just dead here if I start activating Strider? They might be. It's always easy to underestimate how much damage you have on the board with this deck. So that's two more. Two more. Yeah, we should have Exaxes. Because the artist sees itself dying, and then the last one's one more damage. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Facing Archfiend's Vessel, turn one. So our opponent's also likely on a similar deck. Red, black and priest. If our opponent ever plays a Mayhem Devil, it's pretty much game over. 
Our deck doesn't really beat Mayhem Devil, sadly. Gonna be another Archfiend's vessel for now. They could call off the Death Dweller and make two five five flyers, which is also gonna be tough to beat. And yep, there it is. Turn three, ten. Power and toughness in the air. And a scorpion that they can sacrifice to my priest. Yeah, this game looks pretty over. So we're at seven. And there's a Mayhem Devil. Alright. That should seal the deal. Mayhem Devil is probably the biggest weakness of our deck. Just because we have so many sacrifice effects ourselves. And it's very easy to kill a Blood Artist with Mayhem Devil. So... As far as semi-mirror matches goes, that's a pretty bad one for us to face. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and sadly we're a sacrifice deck and not a white weenie deck, so we can't keep this. And this is better. So... Probably ditch the simulacrum. If we do find Citadel, we've got Priest to provide some additional mana. And I'll need the cheap creatures to sacrifice to the Priests if we don't draw another one. Temple of Abandon. Now, Wilderness Reclamation is also suspended in Historic now, so that's no longer a concern. Get in for two. And then I guess we'll play the Celebrants. Just want to draw my card. And we can get back Gutter Bones. Dried of Legion Grove, so I've got our ramp deck. Presumably with Field of the Dead, seeing all these different lands. Now I could play Strider, I think I'm just gonna play Lurus and get back Hunted Witness from the Graveyard. And our opponent packs it in, sweet. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play. And what do I think of this hand? It's missing a sacrifice engine. No striders or priests. No citadel to work towards. So it seems a little too fair. This is better. And then probably bottom one strider. It's close between strider or like the celebrant here. And a crashing drawbridge. Alright, this looks familiar. I could scry on upkeep here to improve my draw step. Although I might want to play artists before we start sacking stuff. And there we see the turn 3 Rage Blood Shaman. Alright. Let's uh, just take the draw step for now. Priest is great. So now I'm a lot happier about potentially sacrificing stuff to the Strider. Uh, so we'll be able to drain the opponent for two. We can't get combo at this turn since they only have seven mana at the most with... Uh, Iron Crank feats, so no Death Bell or War Cry just yet. Priest down, but at least we get to scry and we get to fizzle the prophecy so our opponent doesn't get to improve their hands. Now, is Garrison Cat good enough? How much damage do I have here? 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13. I think I've got around 13 damage if I keep the Garrison Cat, which is a lot, but maybe I would rather look for something different here. Now, without Priest, I don't have the mana to cast a Citadel if I draw one. But I guess like a Lurus would be an improvement. As we see, Cathartic Reunion discarding Sathron and Reunion. Yeah, I think I want to look for Lurus, another Woestrider I'll take. Or just another Celebrant or Artists. Swamp, not so much. Tower would let me ramp towards Citadel, but I don't have a Citadel yet. So let's keep sacking stuff until we draw something useful. Now if I find a 1-drop, I'll probably take it. Bottom that. Alright, let's take the draw step and hope for the best. Just a land. Alright, well. Not doing much here. Prophecy to kill Strider. That happens. Can't quite escape with Strider yet. Mindstone. Alright. Well, if the last two cards are Feet and Warcry, we could be dead. Although there's Citadel. That's exciting. So now we just need a land. It's going to be hard cast Sathron with haste thanks to the drawbridge. So take 10 or just 8. Oh no, another citadel. Disaster strikes. Yeah, if only we had a Citadel earlier, then I could have kept the Phyrexian Tower 
and played it a few turns ago. I probably would have kept the drawbridge in hand for another reunion. Let's see, 13. Well, menace means I probably don't want to block. But now it's 7 life, the citadel's not too impressive. As we draw another hunted witness. And there's a war cry at long last. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a great opening hand. I'll lead with the gutter bones, I think. Opponent on goblins. Now, this is also a matchup where finding Blood Artist would be nice, because if they sacrifice to Prospector, they would also lose one life each time. So, let's attack. Play Priests. And hope there's no turn 3 Muxus incoming. Although, with Priest, we should be able to prevent it. Maybe it's a different take on uh, Goblins. Who knows? I'm still okay attacking with the Gutter Bones, because if they trade with Wily Goblin, I can just play Garrison Cat and Witness and make them sack the Prospector. So now I probably play Celebrant into Hunted Witness, and then I can use the 2 mana from Priest to get back Gutter Bones. I don't think I'll quite have lethal next turn, but we're getting close. If we can find another celebrant or artist. Shame Roller kills my token. Alright, wow. Well, opponent concedes. Surprising, but I guess they uh, couldn't handle the priest. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This is an easy mulligan. This one I'll keep. And then it is tempting to keep Simulacrum to ramp a sword citadel, as well as priests. So I'll probably ditch the celebrants. And then ideally draw another cheap creature we can sack to the priests. Facing Catria Trium. Make that two. At least we're hitting our land drops, so turn five I can expect to play Citadel. Alright, Garrison Cat's nice. So, I'll be able to play Solemn Simulacrum. And next turn, play Citadel. Song of Creation, I see. Let's see if we're dead. Alright, so our opponent fizzled out, discards their entire hand to hand size, and we get to play a Citadel here, so that's nice. Get in for four.
And then I don't want to play my land yet, since I could play land of the top. Striders, great. Another Strider. So now it's our turn to combo off. Just gotta find Celebrant or Blood Artists. And there we go. That should wrap things up pretty quickly. And our opponent explodes. Nice. So yeah, Citadel does give the deck a powerful new dimension at which it can potentially combo kill other combo decks, where otherwise we would be a little bit too slow. Of course, if the Song of Creation deck managed to combo off entirely, we would have died that turn. But uh, yeah, that's some of the inconsistency that the Song of Creation deck can have as well. So I'm pretty happy with where the deck ended up. Now is the deck better than the Black Rat Sacrifice decks? Probably not. Mayhem Devil is still a very powerful card and uh, we're missing out on that. But I do think the deck is more consistent than Black Rat Sacrifice once it is comboing off with Bolas Citadel, just because we have eight ways to drain the opponent as opposed to just the four Mayhem Devils from the Black Rat Sacrifice decks. And we also have way more sacrifice fodder with Garrison Cat and Hunted Witness. So once we get Strider and Citadel in play, we're much more likely to win the game on the very same turn. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.